owe the law. That means you have no idea the law. And every single priest has been taught the law. So as every single Levite, because every Levite is a priest. They know the law. So why would Jesus use them as an example, knowing well that what the priest did and what the Levite did was according to the law? Amen. How? What? Are you getting it? How could Jesus use this parable and say it was a priest who came and looked upon him and walked past? Then the Levi came and looked upon him and walked past. But the Samaritan came and took the person. Do you understand the meaning of this parable? Let me break it down for you. What I'm telling you, Jesus was saying that the laws have a bondage on men that no one could be saved by law that we have been saved by grace of him because when you follow the law you are limited the law condemns you the law does not give you the authority to please god that no matter what you do you shall be condemned but he has come not to destroy the law he came to fulfill the law that you and me shall have time to come before God that you and me shall be renewed before God so you and me shall have grace in the name of Jesus that we will not be judged by the law but we will walk in the grace of Jesus Christ that the law have no hold on you the only person who was able to help that man was a man not under a law. Do you understand? The Samaritan had none of these laws against him. And he was able to help the person. The Jew, the, 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 the priest and the, and the Levite were bound by law. They thought that the law is what will save them. So Jesus was speaking to who? Let me now let me now put you through the revelation so that you can see the picture clearly. The Bible says the person that came to Jesus was a lawyer, right? Because the laws were interpreted by the Levites. Are you getting it? And Jesus was trying to give him the reason of redemption and life it is not based on you following any laws it is based on the redemption of him jesus that is not by the law that you are redeemed or saved it is by the grace of christ that you redeems and, and save man and give eternal life so when the man came to jesus he said master what shall i do to inherit eternal life and Jesus want to, had to prove to the man that no matter whatever you do, you are not saved because you do good things and you know the law. You are saved because of me, my grace, which is sufficient for you. So if you think that you are, you are going with the law, you yourself will leave your neighbor dead. Instead of going with the grace of Christ, you are going with your own ability. Your own ability, no matter what, it is incomplete without me. Hallelujah. So Jesus told him. He told him completely that even though the Levites and the priests were doing the right thing, they were still judged because their life and their relationship was based on the law that could not save them. It's not because the Lord was not complete. 
The law was static enough, but they could not follow the law because you cannot please God. The Bible says your righteousness, your goodness, all the good things you can you could think about anything that you can do is before God as a dirty rag. So it's by grace. Don't get confused. The woman came to Christ, judged and condemned by the law. The bird coming everywhere she turns. But Jesus said, I did not come to condemn the law. I came to fulfill it. The same law that was used by the society to condemn her, it was the same law that brought that woman close to Jesus. Your inconvenience in life are not meant to destroy you. They are meant to draw you closer to Jesus. When you turn around, you see, you see no one there. It's telling you to draw close to Jesus. Because Jesus always takes our inconveniences and turn it in our favor. I don't know where you are, what you are going through, what your situation is, what sort of plan, what sort of thing that your, your challenges that you are going through. But I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, whether you're from YouTube, Facebook, whether you're watching this live or whatever medium, I want to make it clear and completely clear that your self-preservation, your self, 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 self-centeredness, trying to please each and everyone on the streets, Trying to show to people that you are a good person. Trying to cut the scripture and copy paste it and sugarcoat it. Thinking that you want to be nice to people. The laws. Your ways. Does not save. It bring pain and injury. It bring contempt. It, it harbors uncleanliness in the heart and in the deeds of everything. You might call it whatever name, whatever thing that you think you are doing. You see, my friends, if you take a pig and you wash a pig, and you put a lipstick on the pig, it's still a pig. You cannot change things. You need a rebirth. And the only one who has promised and gives rebirth and rejuvenation is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That he said, set the man be born again. You cannot change yourself. You need to be born again. That your old person had to die. And your new person had to be born again. So stop trying to change yourself. Stop trying to do all those things that you have been doing. Hoping that the society will accept you. You are not meant to be accepted. You are meant to rule and overcome them. Because you have been given authority that if you come to Christ. And you leave all to Christ. And whatever challenges that challenges you, whatever things that goes on in your life, whatever thing that keeps you awake at night, I can promise you that the Spirit of God will touch you and guide you and change you. Some of us can put a new song in your mouth. Because I trust him. That our God that we worship, he is worthy and is faithful enough to do more that you and me could ever dream about. If you can hear the sound of my voice, I want you to bow your head down in prayer with me. 
And I know that you have tried all things. I know that you have been everywhere. You are intelligent. You might be smarter than me multiple and billion times over. You have a proper command of this language from the queen. And you can see that someone is just bumbling and trying to send information to you. Just don't pay attention to me. Pay attention to the words.